Go. Consider a marble moving on a horizontal track with a speed of 10 meters per second to be replaced. With a speed of 10 meters per second to be replaced. Ignore friction and air situation. Ignore friction and air situation. The marble leaves the track and falls through the air to the ground a vertical distance of 1.5 meters. A. Describe the horizontal motion of the marble as it flies through the air, assuming zero air resistance. Uh, B. Describe the vertical motion of the marble as it flies through the air, assuming zero air resistance. Okay, what, what's the height of the table again? Uh, 1.5. Okay. I suppose that uh, one of the first things you want to do is decide which way you want to be positive, up or down. You would label that on your diagram. Which direction do you guys want to be positive? Okay, most people choose up. I, I actually like choosing the direction of my acceleration to be positive, but it works just the same either way. You guys cool? So I'm labeling it next to my diagram so it's absolutely clear. Um, Maybe read the question again and see if there's any information I left out in my diagram. Um, initial velocity is 10 meters per second. So the, the horizontal velocity. Okay, so V naught X is 10 meters per second. Uh, what's V naught Y, please, everybody? Zero. I didn't hear enough people there. Zero. And this is, a, this is like, if you throw a rock, right, and you throw it horizontally, then when the rock leaves your hand, it doesn't have any Y velocity yet, right? But if you throw a rock downward at all, at any angle downward, it has an initial Y velocity. Or if you throw a rock at any angle above horizontal, then the rock has an initial Y velocity. But in this case, and a lot of the problems on this worksheet, it says the word horizontal, meaning that the initial velocity is only horizontal once the object is a projectile. Are you guys good? Yeah. Okay. So, is there anything I left out? What else do we know? A, what's A in the X direction, please? What's A in the Y direction? Okay. And as by my convention that you guys said up positive, this would be a negative. You all good? Is there anything I left out that we know? Okay, I'm going to call that a delta y, yeah. and since you guys made up positive, my delta y would be negative 1.5 meters. Are you guys cool? Um, okay, so well, you guys want to see graphs or equate? I'm going to use graphs. I like graphs more, and then I'll, I'll solve the problem with equations. So in the horizontal direction, right, um, what does our velocity graph look like? Show me with, like, your arms or something, please. Yeah, horizontal velocity only, please, if you will. You're all doing, like, you're all doing this, yeah? And I'm also going to label to the right positive as well. So up is positive y, to the right is going to be positive x. You guys cool? So that makes my, y, my x velocity positive. Hee <laughs> hee? And from what you're saying, the x velocity never changes, yeah? Now, I should do a separate set of graphs for the vertical motion, okay? So in the vertical direction, um, what does my y velocity graph look like? Please help. Okay. What's my initial y velocity? Ooh, very good. All right. So it's like that then. And that's actually a rather simple one because the area there is only a triangle, right? In other words, this is a lot easier when we have a new initial y velocity. Cool. And this would be my delta y, which I already know, right? And then I can draw a, um, I could draw a y versus t graph, but I'm, most of the time I can solve these problems with just velocity and acceleration graphs. So I'm going to go straight to an acceleration graph. What's that going to look like, please? Negative or positive? And how do I draw it? Okay, one person only. How about the rest of you guys? My acceleration graph looks like what? All right. Any slope? All right. My, that, my line is horrible. Let me fix it. How about that? 
Is that better? And this line should be straight, so I'll fix it, make it look better. All right. All right, cool. And what's this area going to be? All right, and we know A, A, well, can I use negative 10? So I'm going to approximate this to be negative 10. Now, this area is negative 10t, and that's going to be our change in what? Good. And so if I look here from 0 to my final velocity, v final, that's my change in velocity of negative 10t. Do you see how I figured that out? So my change in velocity is negative 10t. I'm labeling it as the height of that triangle. Now, so delta y has to be equal to what? Help me. 1 half times negative 10t times, you forgot t, right? The base of that triangle, right? And we actually know what the delta y is. What is it? Negative 1.5. Now I'm going to leave out units and just check units up here. This is meters. Um, this is meters per second squared. And this is seconds. Um, something's wrong. Meters per second squared times seconds. Now it's fine, right? Because these seconds cancel with those two. And meters equals meters. So it looks legit. You guys happy? Um, Okay, so negative 5t squared equals negative 1.5. So t, <clears throat> well, I'll do this step by step. t equals square root of 1.5 over 5. Is everybody good? Or did I mess that up? Is that legit? Is that okay? You're checking my work, I hope? So t is the square root of, oh, I didn't do that right, sorry. Haha, uh -huh, just kidding. There. Haha, uh -huh, whoops. <laughs> All right. 1.5 over 5. And then t is going to be the square root of 1.5 over 5. I'm not going to bother calculating it. You can do that. Um, in terms of strategy, what have we found here? The time for what? The time when we hit, when we travel 1.5 meters, or when we hit the ground. Yeah, time for ball to hit the ground. And this is often our strategy. Is the time to hit the ground the same whether you're talking about the horizontal motion or the vertical motion? Yes. So if you use info from the horizontal motion or from the vertical motion, and you find the time that it's in the air, you can use that time for the other motion. You guys with me? In other words, here, I found the time to hit the ground using the vertical motion. I can use this time over here, and I can find what? What's this distance going to be? Which is delta... Delta x equals v in the x direction times t. Is everybody good? And delta x, therefore, is going to be um, v in the x direction never changes, right? So initial velocity in the x direction is the same as the velocity in the x direction the whole time. So that's 10 meter per second times whatever t I get. Cool? Cool. So I can just use, oh, I didn't want to do that. So I can just use the time from here, and I've got my displacement horizontally, OK? Um, the other class wanted me to sh show them the equations as well. So I'll show you how you get the same thing using the equations. Could you tell me what equation sheet, please? It's the same problem, so same given, same everything. Um, you probably want to use an equation for position, but use y. Remember, how this is 1.5 meters, and this was 10 meters per second. Did you find the equation? Yeah. What, what was given again? I'm going to write them down again. Um, 
All right, so we have initial velocity in the y direction, which was zero, initial velocity in the x direction, which was 10 meter per second. We have this way as positive, and we have this way as positive. The up is positive y, the right is positive x. What's, um, sorry, what else did we know? We know a in the y direction is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and we're going to use 10 negative. And we add a delta y. What was our delta y again? Negative 1.5 meters. Okay. Is there anything I forgot that we know? Okay. So the equation you guys were suggesting for position is y equals Okay, y naught plus. Okay, initial velocity in the y direction times t, yeah. Uh, plus one half. Okay, plus one half. Okay, everybody's good with where she got that? Yeah. I only want to convince you that this is the same darn thing. It's just equation world, okay? So uh, what I like to do with this equation right away is, is take my final position and subtract my initial position from both sides. That gets me my change in position, which you'll notice is what I wrote here, okay? So my this is all equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared, right? Mm -hmm. v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. Now on the graph, this is area of rectangle on your velocity graph. That didn't exist for this scenario because we just had a triangle. If you have an initial velocity, you have a triangle and a rectangle. This term is the area of the triangle. Does that make sense? So since our initial velocity in the y direction is zero, that term becomes zero. So we really only have to worry about the other term, which is one half a y t squared, right? And if I solve that for t squared, I get t squared equals, um, how do I do this? Two delta y over a y. Are you guys good? And so t would be square root of two delta y over a y. Is that exactly the same thing we had before? <clears throat> and then in the x direction, we don't have any acceleration. So horizontally, so this is the vertical motion. And this is over here is the horizontal. Right? So x equals x naught plus um, v naught x t plus 1 half a x t squared. What's a in the x direction? Okay, so this term disappears, right? So what we're left with is x final equals x naught plus v naught x t. But it's funny because v naught x doesn't make any sense because v never changes. So I'm just going to write vt. And if I rearrange this, I just get delta x. I subtract x naught from both sides. I get delta x equals what? Vxt. Yeah. You guys good? Yeah. All right. So this time we can put here, we know Vx, which is never, the x velocity never changes. So we now have a way to find the horizontal displacement. You guys good? So you can do this either way. In fact, you should be able to do the problem either way. Cool? Um, all right. So that's, um, what number was that? Two. That was number two. I'll stop this.